clear. I'm having a stroke. You just need to know the sudden signs. Look for FAST, F-A-S-T. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. Or S, speech difficulty. Then T, time. Time to call 911 immediately. Because the sooner they get to the hospital, the sooner they'll get treatment. And that can make a remarkable difference in their recovery. Know the sudden signs. Face, arm, speech, time. Spot a stroke fast. Visit strokeassociation.org. Brought to you by the American Stroke Association and the Ad Council. Yo, what happened to you here? You have to experience what I just experienced. What'd you do? Stick your finger in an electric outlet or something? Close. I just listened to electric air. Electric air? Electric air? Can everyone stop repeating electric air and tell me what electric air is? Electric air will get your heart racing, neurons sparking, and lips smiling. Join me, Tova, as I shock your ears with EDM's greatest hits. Five out of five doctors agree one hour of electric air every week is just what you need to increase your energy and leave you feeling stimulated. Side effects may include uncontrollable mood swings, shuffling, and in some extreme cases, headbanging. Too much headbanging, huh? Dude, those side effects are serious. Seriously amazing. <laughs> so join me every Wednesday night at 8 for Electric Air on the voice of NASA Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Jacob Volk. Jacob Volk. Jacob Walk. <laughs> You're not going to be able to get through I that can't. without laughing. Isn't that the best I line heard, that we have? I heard this song come on the radio the other day, and I had to pull over, and I was dying. <laughs> <laughs> That is the best liner we have here at WHPC. You're listening to Beyond the Game on the Voice of Nassau oh Community College, 90.3 WHPC. I am Jacob Volk. You can, Eric, I'm sorry. I'm he's sorry. He's going to get me going soon. You can follow me on Twitter. At Real Jake Volk. That's Volk with a V. Oh, Sitting across man. from me, Dominic Arvelino. You can follow on Twitter at Darbs5258. Eric Fischetti. You can follow on Twitter at Sergeant Fish. Up glove, and down glove. tweeting. <laughs> <laughs> and the true hockey maven is here to hell with that other I guy. I just made a Twitter, by the way. You did? Yeah. What is it? What is it? What please, is it? Tell me okay, okay. Okay. please tell me it's true hockey maven. It's L E L L E hockey maven. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Screw you, Stan Fischler! <laughs> Screw you! Oh, screw you. Yeah, I just made it the yeah, other day. Yeah, it's so. catching on. Let me take a guess what your first tweet was. <laughs> Let's go, Penguins. Yeah. It was, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was uh, when they won. <laughs> so we've had Martin from Merrick on this whole time. Marty, how are you? Okay, Yum Ray, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> At least you were listening. And just to let you know, today in history, on June 16th, 1958, Imre Naj was at was actually executed. <laughs> That's right. I think I might get shot in the head soon. I don't well, know. We can, we, can, we can work on that, but just... Oh, oh, oh wait a minute. Can wait, you say that? Run. Can you say that on the radio? What's oh that God. Iron Maiden song? Head for the Hills? Go, go. Oh, my goodness. But, but anyway, just, just to throw out a little bit more, since, he was, since it was a uh, political execution, he was buried face down with his <laughs> hands and feet tied with barbed wire. Did you hear wow. what <laughs> Did you hear how Bob Knight said that he wanted to be buried? No. He wanted to be buried upside down so that his critics can kiss his ass. Okay, yeah, ac- actually now that you have heard that, but since well, I'm I'm going to give you a lead into hockey. Let's talk about this UFC fight. Okay. That, that's coming up in August. Mayweather Conor McGregor, McGregor Floyd Mer- Mayweather. Okay. Okay. Now, I have heard uh, certain commentators say that McGregor's not even going to get a punch in on Mayweather. He's going to hold his I own. I don't know about that. He's going to hold his own. Mayweather will win, but McGregor won't embarrass himself. Well, do you think that McGregor is going to win any rounds? Uh, to be hmm. honest with you, I think it's going to end in a knockout. Hmm. So, I mean, I'm going to say McGregor wins maybe one or two rounds. Maybe. Oh, I thought you were going to say wins the whole thing. I'm like, I don't think no, so. No, no, no. I, I'm, no. I'm picking Mayweather. Mayweather I all mean, the way. I'm not, I'm not a big boxing or a UFC fan. I did watch Mayweather Pacquiao. 
I did watch that. That was a joke. <laughs> you know what? Which this one could uh, turn out to be. Yes, you it never could. know. Yes, it could. Like usual with these fights. You pay so much money to see them, and then they turn out to be... Well, that was Mike Tyson in his prime. You paid 100 bucks to see him fight. Fights and over in the and first then he round. ran into James Buster Douglas. Yep. Exactly. The first time. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's interesting that uh, if I understand it right, you know, UFC signed off on it, but they're really not doing much more than that. And I was just wondering what your thoughts were with that. I mean, I can't speak to too much specificity on it because, again, I'm not a UFC fan. I'm not a boxing fan. I'm not a big combat sports fan. Used to be a wrestling fan. That was pretty much the extent of it. I mean, I think this is good for UFC in general. It, it Well, of course, especially if McGregor actually does better than what people seem to think he's going to be doing. If McGregor's knocked out in the first round, I mean, that's it. This whole thing of UFC fighters holding their own against I, boxers is, is over. I think that if McGregor goes past, and I just had this conversation with uh, one, one of our good friends, Joe Ritter, who's actually, you know, speaks about this a lot. He's looking forward to this fight. But he thinks, and I agree with him, if McGregor wins... This fight, that's it for boxing. Like, boxing is going downhill from there if McGregor wins. Like, if you think about the great boxing matches in the past, and two comes to my mind, the Thrill in Manila and the Rumble in the Jungle, those are all Muhammad Ali fights. Mm -hmm. Right. And if Mayweather can't get past three rounds with McGregor, it's going to look like Mayweather's a bum and he can't hold his own against, honestly, one of the best fighters in the world. And athletes in general. I mean, you and can athlete. Say he's... That's true, but I think that somehow, some way, this is going to downgrade boxing a lot if McGregor puts up a fight. Well, it, I mean, it's. I mean, let's face it. Certainly, it's a stunt. Certainly, uh, the sport of boxing is nowhere near where it was when uh, uh, Ali and Frazier were fighting, or even when Ali had that exhibition against a Japanese wrestler. Yeah, that's right, Antonio Inoki. Right. That's right. I, I remember that. That was at uh, Shea Stadium, right? I don't remember where it was. I just re I, I just remember that it happened. I think it was at Shea. Uh, but, um, yeah, boxing has gone downhill. It's no longer a glamorous thing for whatever reason. Maybe... You know, there just hasn't been somebody out there that captured, you know, that captured uh, people's interests since Ali. And let's face it, Ali was a unique character, and there'll never be another Ali. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, even... All right, Marty, thanks for the call. Bye. All right, that was Martin from Merrick. That was a good call. It was in Tokyo, not at Shea. Oh, dang. It was, uh, <laughs> That's a little far off. <laughs> I was going to say, that's like halfway around the world. <laughs> Is there a Shea in Tokyo? There might be. American boxer Muhammad Ali and ja Japanese professional wrestler Antonio Inoki was held at Ni ja Japanese Arena in Tokyo yeah, don't even try to on June 26, 1976. <laughs> Japanese Arena. <laughs> <laughs> that was the name. So, uh, let's get to hockey. The Rangers bought out Dan Girardi. Last year, he had 15 points in 63 games. Elnor, what are your thoughts on him being bought out? I thought that it was necessary. It um, makes the Rangers cap situation a lot more manageable. Um, I feel bad for Dan Girardi because I think that he's given all that he's had to the Rangers. Um, I just think it's time for him to go, and I, I feel that way about Mark Stahl, too. But I think the time is up. I think it's time for the young guys Start setting up Brady. Shea is going to be awesome. I like him a lot. So yeah, I think, Shea's good. Yeah, I think that this is what the Rangers had to do. It's, I really do. It's going to be... Brady Skeezy. <laughs> <laughs> Brady Skeezy. Oh, man. Th that's what I was thinking of. Brady Shea instead of Shea Stadium. Brady Shea. <laughs> <laughs> Dan Girardi to Vegas. Uh, you know what could happen? Or the Avalanche. The Avalanche. Okay. I could see that. Yeah. The Avalanche are kind of in this weird mode where I feel I've so them, bad for the Avalanche. Me too. I I've heard them link to Alex Galchenyuk. Where did that come from? One minute it was them trading to Shane Landeskog. Now they're looking to get Galchenyuk. Where'd that come from? Yeah, I don't know why. I don't know. Oh my god! But they're trying to contend. Yeah. They're, they're, they're a long way off. Yeah. I. You know what? I commend Joe Sakic for doing his due diligence. I guess they but... should be getting Nolan Patrick. That's really what should have been. Yes, I agree with you. I can't believe the Devils uh, won yep. that. Yeah, uh, crazy. How, how does that happen? It goes back to the lottery. 
Yeah. The I, NHL draft? The NHL doesn't need a draft lottery. It really doesn't. What teams do you really think are tanking? The Avalanche, uh, they, they had the best shot at the first overall pick. They were just a lousy team. Yeah. It's not that they were tanking. They were just a lousy team. They just couldn't win. Goaltending needs so much work. So yeah. So much well, work. Well, Calvin it Picard didn't me. work out. Yeah. Picard didn't work out. Varlamov's been struggling. Ooh, man, the Avalanche. Good Gandhi. So the Panthers hired Bob, uh, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, Bonner? Boffner? I'm not sure. I should know it. To be their head coach. Before that, he was an assistant coach for the Sharks. Eleanor, do you know how to pronounce his last name? I don't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel that bad. Is it hot in here? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but what do you think of hot? I think it's great. Uh, he had a great coaching career with the Windsor Spitfires of the OHL. He coached them for eight seasons and led them to um, back-to-back Memorial Cups. I think he's great. I think he's um, an awesome coach for this age group with um, Aaron Ekblad, Alexander Barkov, uh, Riley Smith. I think it's a great hire. I really do. Yeah, I, Good I job, agree. Panthers. I agree. He was a highly thought of coaching prospect. This is going to be a good move for the Panthers after they bungled the Gerard Gallant situation. Yeah, horrible. I mean, I'm still upset about that. I still him, can't believe it. They left him the hitchhike home. <laughs> yeah. I thought he was going to get arthritis. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. So, speaking of new head coaches, the Sabres hired Phil Housley to be their head coach. Before that, he was an assistant coach for the Clarence S. Campbell Bowl winning Predators because there's no sport in hockey more prestigious than the Clarence S. Campbell Bowl, right? I mean, who cares about the Stanley Cup? Who cares about that team in Pittsburgh? <laughs> the stinking Penguins. Of course they repeat. Of course. It's history. As Islander fans can't oh, catch a play. Yeah. <laughs> the Devils and the Flyers move up. The Penguins are winning Stanley Cups. The Islanders are playing a preseason game at the Coliseum. <laughs> it's just a tease to us. Us Islander fans can't catch a break. I honestly think that's a test. To, no, to see what would happen. It's a tease is what it is. I it's just, a tease. I don't see. know. I, I, I'm excited to see what happens. And I might so go. I. I might go to that. Like, you know It's going to be the best preseason game. Preseason game in like sports history. It's gonna be it's gonna be the loudest preseason game. I was just about to say it'll be the most populated. So Eleanor, what do you think of the hire? Again, I think it's a good hire. The thing that um sticks out most for me is that obviously Jack Eichel has been has had attitude issues um the past couple of months and I don't want to speak badly about PK Subban, but he has attitude problems. Oh, of course he and does. obviously he had to deal, um Phil Housley had to deal with that. <laughs> um, but on the Predator, so he knows how to handle it. He knows how to handle the attitude, and I think it'll be good for Jack Eichel, and I think it'll be good for the Sabres. And the thing about Phil Housley is he was a darn good yes. player in his day. Yep. Over a 1,000 career points. Again, really good player. Jack Eichel will listen to him. Yep. So it's kind of... Even better. <laughs> and again, Jack Eichel, I'm like one of the biggest Jack Eichel fans you'll ever meet, but I just... Jack I Eichel's going to... His attitude changes. Jack Eichel's going to work out. He just needs yeah. to keep his attitude in check. Yeah. Do you think the Sabres are Eichel's team right now or not yet? I don't, not, I not don't yet. think yet. Uh, probably not, right? He hasn't, well, no, I he don't, hasn't set his stuff well, yet. Who, who else's team would it be? Because I, yeah. Well, yeah, that's the point. Because like, he, I don't he, think he's, it's he's the future. Team. I mean, Eichel's the best player on the team, 100%. but do you want to What about um, your... O'Reilly? No, 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 no. no. Well, Eichel's better well, than O'Reilly. O'Reilly isn't... O'Reilly on... Um, I think he's still there. He's on the Avalanche now. No, no, no he's still. You know, he yeah. was traded from the Avalanche. You're traded from the Avalanche. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, but what about the defenseman on Buffalo? Tyler Myers? No, because uh, he was traded a while ago. He's Ristolainen. R- yes, Ristolainen. I'll take Eichel over Ristolainen. Yeah, me too. How about that? Huh? That was pretty good. Knowing the Sabres roster like that. Dang. Yeah, Nothing Ristolainen. ever happens in Buffalo. <laughs> I was going to say, who cares about Buffalo? It's just the Bills Buffalo. and the Sabres. And the Buffalo Braves, and old snow. basketball team. <laughs> snow 24-7, 3-65. You know, so the Lightning traded Jonathan Drouin and a conditional 2018 sixth-round pick to the Canadians for Mikhail Sergachev. That I can pronounce. <laughs> and a conditional 2018 second-round pick. The picks are conditional on Sergachev not playing in at least 40 games, regular season and playoffs combined for Tampa Bay next season. Montreal then signed Drouin to a six-year extension worth $33 million. Last year, Drouin had 53 points in 73 games, and Sergachev had zero points in four games, but he's still a very highly thought-of prospect. Eleanor, 
who do you think won the trade? Okay, so first of all, I like can't get over this trade. When I got the notification, I, my jaw literally hit the floor. Like I texted my brother, I was like, I can't believe this because I was so shocked. It was a blockbuster. Um, so I think that right now the Canadians won the trade, but my problem with it is that Montreal Canadiens, their biggest weakness, I think, is their defense, and they just traded away.